Hi, my name is LaToya and I volunteer here at Set Free. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this message. It is because of people just like you that we are able to expand our reach for the kingdom. If you would like to give to the efforts of Set Free Church or to Set Free Missions, please visit setfree.cc slash give for more. If there's anything we can do to serve you, please feel free to contact us, 864-269-3620 or at hello at setfree.cc. Again, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy. The story behind the mystery. We've been talking about mysteries. One Sunday, one Wednesday, we talked about Ahithophel. Remember that? And we've talked about, what was the other mystery? Somebody help me. I've, I've forgotten what the other. Yes. Good. And, and tonight, I got another mystery I want to talk about. Go be in your Bible to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Pastor Caleb's been sitting in my chair last week. I'm just all out of sorts tonight, on it, but I, I get some gear for it's over with. First Samuel chapter 16, and this this scripture always to me is a big question mark. Uh, I'm going to read it, and then we will see the mystery in it. Saul, God had just taken the kingdom from Saul, and God says to Samuel in verse one. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thine horn with oil and go. Get some anointing and go. I will send you to Jesse the Beth Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear, hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. He said, Saul's going to know I'm up to something. I'm the prophet. And he will take my life if he knows I'm in here sacrificing, or, I mean, anointing a new king. And I'm going to tell you something about Jesse, why it makes sense that he went to Jesse's house in a minute. Verse 3, and call Jesse to sacrifice. And I will show you what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Samuel did that which the Lord spake, came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, saying, Comest thou peaceably. Boy, let me tell you something. The prophet had respect back in those days. When the prophet walked in the town, that meant God was about to show up. We don't respect the anointing of God nowadays. Back then, they knew it was for real. And he, they said, Do you come peacefully? He said, Peaceably. I'm come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to sacrifice. He sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to sacrifice. And it came to pass when, he, when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed this before, you, before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And everybody in here said, Amen. It's glad about that. Amen. Then Jesse called Abinadab, made him pass before Samuel. See, Jesse knew what Samuel was doing. He's going to anoint one of them boys king. And, and uh, he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons, I'm in 1 Samuel 16, Lola Faith, seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. Behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not set them till he come hither. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, he was red-headed. And, and with all of beautiful eyes, he had some striking eyes. And, and of a beautiful countenance, he was a good-looking guy. And, and goodly to look upon. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. 
Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed them in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. That's quite a story. That's quite a, an event. But here's the mystery to me in that event. If the prophet shows up at your house and says, God has sent me here to anoint one of your sons king, call your sons in here. Wouldn't you call all of them in? And then the mystery is David was the baby. Why did they not call David? What mama don't call the baby in? Because the baby's always mama's favorite. That's coming from, I'm the oldest in my family. <laughs> my sister who's around here on Sundays, that's the baby in our family. Uh, but uh, why, I mean, here's a great mystery to me. Why did you not even call him in? And why did the prophet have to say, well, don't you have another son? You would think when he said about the seventh one, well, none of these or the king, you'd be going, whoa, 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 wait a minute, I got one more. Because you'd want one of your sons to be the king. Do y'all see the mystery there? And, he, and the prophet had to dig around. The prophet knew God told him one of Jesse's sons is going to be the king. But Jesse hadn't brought the king before him that uh, was going to be the son before him. It was going to be his king. So, the mystery here. Now, I'm going to tell you the story behind the mystery. Why didn't they call David in? What mother wouldn't call in all of her sons, especially the baby son? Maybe, we're talking about mysteries, right? Maybe she thought that uh, David wasn't qualified. Let me take this mystery a little deeper. Maybe she wasn't David's mama. Oh, wait a minute. If, if six kids are her, I mean, if seven kids are hers, but number eight's not hers, then why would she bother to call in a stepson? She would want her biological sons to be but the Bible don't say he was a stepson right there. Well, let me play Sherlock Holmes and let's investigate. <laughs> if I had a pipe, I'd put it in my mouth right now. <laughs> Watch this. We find in the Bible that David had two sisters. When you, when you get into to the lineage part, and he's talking about Jesse's lineage and all. Go watch this now. Go with me over to First, First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter, um, chapter two. Go on over there, First Chronicles chapter two, and, and, and watch this. It's, it's giving some lineage. Let's let's investigate this. And and, and go to like. Uh, let's see where I want to start at. Go to like verse thirteen. It's giving Jesse and Jesse's lineage. Jesse is, is David's father, right? This is David's father. It tells you it's David's father. Watch this. Jesse begot his firstborn Eliab, and Abinadab, the second, and Shema, the third, Nathanael, I think, the fourth, Rady, I don't know these names, the fifth, Os, Osam, the sixth, watch now, watch now, David, the seventh, whose sisters were Zariah and Abigail. It didn't say they, uh, Jesse had these seven sons and their sisters were. He lists all of the sons. Then he gets down to David. Jesse had David and David's sisters were. Do y'all see that in the Bible? Okay, now wait a minute. So it's reading here like, these two sisters were sisters of David, but it doesn't tell you they were sisters of the other sons. Look at it real careful. Look at it. It says, David the seventh, whose sisters were 
Zariah, and Abigail. Now, who in the heck are Zariah and Abigail? Who wants to know who Zariah and Abigail are? Yeah. They're David's sisters, dummy. I just told you. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Watch this. Now, if you go back over to 2 Samuel 17. Go back over to 2 Samuel chapter 17. And look at verse, uh, look at verse 25. I'm telling you, when you, when you play the Sherlock Holmes and dig into the story behind the story, you start to see all kind of drama. Let me tell you, days of our lives don't have nothing on the Bible. And you, if you want some juicy stuff, there is some juicy stuff up in your Bible. And I'm about to get y'all into some juicy family stuff, okay? I mean, this is better than as the world turns, days of our wives, all that stuff. Um, watch this now. In verse 25, it says, And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab. Do you know, I'm going to show you that both of those were his cousins. Do you know that, that when David had Joab, I'm going to show you, Joab is over his army. That was his nephew. Anyway, watch. It says, uh, And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab, which Amasa was a man, watch now carefully, was a man's son whose name was Ithraim, an Israelite, that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, Sister to Zariah, Joab's mother. Zariah was Joab's mother. Joab was over David's army. But here's what I want you to see. Here's Abigail and Zariah. David had two sisters named Abigail and Zariah. But it tells you here that Abigail, at least Abigail, it reads like Zariah too, but at least Abigail was the daughter of Naash. David had two sisters named Abigail. Watch now. And they had named Abigail and Zariah. And their daddy was Naash. Their daddy was not Jesse. Jesse was David's daddy. Are y'all still with me? Jesse's son is David. David's two sisters have a father that's not Jesse. Now, if you put that together, that means that David and the two sisters had the same mama because they had a different daddy. David's got Jesse. The two sisters have Naash, the Amor who was the Amorite king. So I back back up to the scene that we just read, and I'm going to expand on this some more, but I back back up to what we just read. The prophet comes in and says, call all your sons in, and they call them all in except David. David's wife, who we don't even know her name, called in her sons. But this Jesse, who had a different mother, I mean, this David, who had two sisters and a different mother, didn't get called in. As the days of our lives, as sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. David... I'm going to show you something in the scripture here in a minute. It's going to blow your mind. David was more than likely an illegitimate son of Jesse. Whom, when he, David at this time was 13 years of age. Probably he had lived with his mother to a certain age. Then he came to his daddy at 13. Because listen, 
In the Jewish culture at 13 when they go through the bar mitzvah and become men, and he needed to be in his father's lineage at that time. Miss Jesse did not want David involved. And of all the other sons, it tells you, listen, it tells you that David was red-headed, beautiful-eyed. It, it describes what he looked like. He looked like a Moabite. Study it. He looked like a Moabite. Now, 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 now think about something. That first son was tall, dark, handsome. No, that ain't him. You're looking, you looking at the outward appearance. I'm looking at the heart. Um, let, me, let me thicken this plot for you just a little bit. I'm going somewhere, but watch this. Go over to Psalms chapter 51. Have I got you to thinking? I got you to thinking. We're going to put your pipe in your mouth, Sherlock. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Lord, Donna, I, Donna, I got to talk to you. I just found that check that I lost. It was in my Bible. She wrote me a check to give somebody, and I lost it. It's been lost a week or two, and there it is in my Bible. I didn't lose it, baby. <laughs> Psalms, Psalms 51. Psalms 51 and verse 5. We're going to read two scriptures in Psalms. Watch this. Psalms 51 and verse 5. David says this, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. I don't think that's talking about I was born with a sin nature. He's talking about when his mother conceived him. In sin did my mother conceive me. It's not a sin for a wife to have a child by her husband. But if your mama was not married to your daddy, David could say, in sin did my mama conceive me. Well, I don't think that's what that's talking about, Brother Steve. Well, let me nail your hard head down. Go over to Psalms chapter 69. Go over to Psalms chapter 69. I'm going to mess with you right here. Psalms chapter 69. And look at, um, just look at verse 8. I'd like to study the whole psalm. I don't have time, but look at verse 8. David said, I am become a stranger unto my brethren, an alien, an outsider unto my mother's children. Now watch this. I am become a stranger unto my brethren. We know he had two sisters with, with the same mama, but he had these brothers that were Jesse's, that was his I'm saying half brothers. And when it says, when he says, I have become a stranger, you know what the Hebrew word right there is? I am a bastard. I was birthed through adultery. To my brothers, my Jesse's sons, I'm the bastard child. I was birthed through adultery. That's actually what the Hebrew says there. Well, excuse me. Now I understand. Why Jesse's wife didn't call him in to stand before the prophet. Is everybody okay? But I'm going to show you. It's even more messed up than that. It's really more messed up than that. Um, it's, it's, uh, it gets real funky. We're going to get in there where, where it gets real funky. But I want you to think about something before I take you even, even in some more funkiness. Remember, I, I'm developing a relationship between Jesse and David and the Moabites, and I'm going to show you that David does not qualify to be king. Hear what I just said. Remember when David was running from Saul, and he had to run to the cave of Dulem to hide, and, and 600 men, everybody was in distress, and death came, got around him, and they became David's mighty men, and all that. Well, while he was in the cave hiding, he got concerned for his daddy and his daddy's wife, whom he called mother, he got concerned for them, and he took them and hid them somewhere where they would be safe. How many know where David took his dad? Huh? Mark knows. Let me show you where David took his dad to. 
when he was when he was hiding them. Uh, 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 let me see. I think I'm in the right place. First Samuel. I hope I'm in the right place. First Samuel chapter twenty-two. Yeah, First Samuel chapter twenty-two. Go over there with me. First Samuel chapter twenty-two. Watch this. This gets messed up even more. First Samuel chapter twenty-two. Uh, 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 watch. David departed thence. He's running from Saul. From Saul. Escaped to the cave of Dulam with his brethren and all of his father's house heard it and they went down thither to him. Everyone that was in distress, that was in debt, everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. I'd come to your church, Brother Steve, but all them people's messed up. That's what the church is, a bunch of messed up people getting saved. And, and, and then it says what? Look at verse 3. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, who was Nahash, who was the father of his two sisters, Hello, here's the man, here, watch now, here's the man that's anointed to be the king of Israel. Now remember, Nahash, who was Nahash? Nahash was the one in Samuel that, that remember, he, he, was going, he mounted an attack against Israel. And Israel said, hey, let's make a covenant with each other. And Nahash, this king, said to the men of Israel, okay, we'll, you, you want peace with me? I'm going to put out all of his right eye. Y'all come on in tomorrow about this time. We'll poke all of his right eyes out and we can have peace. This is when Saul was still king. And they sent word back to Saul. And Saul said, hey, by the time the sun be hot tomorrow, you have help. And he gathered up about 300,000 men and went in and delivered them. But this is that same king. He hated Israel. He hated the Jews. He wanted to put all of them's right eye out. And now David's trying to hide his daddy. Who, hey, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. You know who the rabbis say Jesse was? Jesse was the chief of the Sanhedrin in his village. The Sanhedrin were the elders that kept the law, kept the rule. They were the, the keepers of the law, make sure everything was done according to the Bible in their village. And Jesse was the head of the Sanhedrin. And so David takes the head of the Jewish Sanhedrin into Naash, the Moabite king, and says, will you protect my daddy while I'm hiding from Saul? What? How, how does that play out? No, wait a minute now. Let's take this thing a little bit further. Let's, let's sink into that moment a minute. I only got us into another moment before I finish my story, but let's sink into that moment. If David is Jesse's son, but David's got two sisters whose daddy is that Moabite king, then David takes in the man, or we're all adults, who had had sex with the same woman that this king had had sex with. The king had two women by her. And here's, here's Jesse comes up. And hello, and he's got a son to her. Talk about going on vacation with your ex and her husband. <laughs> I mean, that's what's going on here. <laughs> he's, saying, he's saying, will you take care of him? <laughs> okay, sure. Bring him on in here. Tell him stay away from my concubine while he's here. Now watch this. Watch God. I want to show you. I want to show you the real story behind the mystery. I've shown you the mystery and how it kind of played out. I feel like I'm missing something. I know I'm forgetting something, but maybe I'll remember it in a minute. Uh, Let me say that before I show you just one point right here. David is completely unqualified, according to the law, to be the king of Israel. Do you, do you know who Jesse's grandmother was? Can I give you some more family history? Jesse's grandmother 
Her, Jesse's grandparents were Ruth and Boaz. Ruth was a Moabite. Now understand, the Jews and the Moabites didn't mix, and I'm going to show you in the scripture here in a minute to what extent. Ruth was a Moabite. And she was Jesse's grandmother, which made him part Moabite. And if David was born to a Moabite concubine, you've got to kind of figure he was half Moabite. And God's anointing him king over Israel. Watch this. Make it even worse. Watch. Deuteronomy chapter 23. I want to show you this. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Go over to Deuteronomy chapter 23. Them Jews so disdained any Moabite bloodline. And while you're turning there, you know where the Moabites came from, right? You remember when, when Lot left Sodom? And he and his two daughters were in the tent. And they got him drunk so they could have sex with him. And they got pregnant from their own daddy. The Moabites was the bloodline of that insensu... Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Blood, that, that's their bloodline. The Jews disdained it. They, you know, I mean, they all about Father Abraham, and here's Lot's with his daughters, their bloodline. The Jews disdained it. And in the book of Deuteronomy here, chapter 23 and verse 1, uh, why am I in the wrong place? Uh, and I wrote down the wrong scripture. Chapter 23, verse 2. Yeah. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation. Now watch now. That, that hit David right there, but then watch this. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation. They shall not enter the congregation of the Lord. Even if David's mother was a Jew, his daddy was part Moabite. His daddy was third generation from the, no, second generation from the Moabite. David was third generation from the Moabite. And the Jews had prohibited, if you get Moabite bloodline in your, in your family, you got to wash it out with ten generations. And here's David, third from, from Ruth. He's got Moabite blood running all in him. And God says, you the man. You the man. Ha. He was not qualified. But here's what I have found out. We're all disqualified. None of us are qualified. But your Bible says that where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. I thought I'd get an amen right there. I, I, I have found that it doesn't matter where you're from, what you've done, or who you used to be. When God decides to lay His hand on you, you are accepted into the beloved. All your sins are up under the blood of Jesus Christ, and none of that counts anymore. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus, and old things have passed away. He does not hold our past against us. Watch this. It's not your credibility, but it's God's credibility. He doesn't want to impress the world with you. He wants to impress the world with Him in you. You hear what I'm saying? He wants to impress the world with Him in you. So, so uh, never forget what I'm saying. You've heard it said over and over. Jesus doesn't call the equipped. He equips those that He calls. He doesn't call the just. He justifies those that He puts, puts His hand on. Uh, 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 I wrote down a few things. I got the thing about God's heroes. They're messed up. If you, I told my wife this morning when we was talking about, that, about this. I said, this Bible is raw and honest. This Bible is real plain about the depravity of man, about how sinful and wicked and messed up men are and how we all deserve hell. And then it's real plain about God's goodness and God's grace and God's joy. All of God's heroes were unqualified. Abraham was too old and Abraham was a liar. 
Elijah was suicidal. Joseph was abused by his family. Job went bankrupt. Uh, it was full of doubt and fear. Moses had a speech problem, and he killed a man. Gideon was afraid, held up in the wine press. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. By the way, I forgot to tell you going through this. Do you know that, um, that um, uh, Ruth and, and, um, um, and um, Jabez, uh, um, who was Ruth's husband? Y'all help me. I just said it. Boaz, yeah. You know who Boaz's mama was? Rahab. Yeah. She wasn't a Jew either. Rahab was a prostitute. The Samaritan woman had lived with five men. Wasn't living with the one she was with then. Noah got drunk. Go read your Bible. Noah got drunk after it was all over. Jeremiah got depressed. He was a kid. He was suicidal. Jacob, now there was one, a cheater, a deceiver, a liar, steal your birthright. David himself turned out to be a murderer and an adulterer. Jonah. Jonah was a racist. He did not want to go down and preach to Nineveh. He did not like the people in Nineveh. Naomi was a widow. She didn't qualify. Peter, he cursed Christ three times. Martha was a worry war. The disciples fell asleep while they was praying with Jesus. If Jesus was in here, I think I could stay awake to pray with him. I would hope I could. <coughs> Have you ever just, uh, let me take a minute and do this with you. I got time. Have you ever looked at Jesus' lineage? I, I don't want to mess you up. And I do a sermon on this where I go through it, and I won't go through it. I ain't got time tonight. But let me tell you something. This is going to make, might, might even make some of you mad, but I'm, what I'm telling you is the truth. David wasn't the pure stock. Jesse wasn't the pure stock. Hold up now. And Jesus wasn't a pure stock. Huh? Well, go to Matthew chapter 1 and look at his lineage. Look at the lineage of Jesus. Jesus had Jew and Gentile in him. That's why when he came to save the world, he saved not just the Jew, but Jew and Gentile. Look, look at the lineage of, 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 uh, of Jesus. I'm, I'm going to start down... Uh, I mean, if you want to talk about a messed up family history, his starts out with Abraham. You know what? All about Abraham. That's not, that's not my wife. That's my sister and all that kind of stuff. And then, and then you get over to Isaac. He was messed up. And then there's Jacob. He was messed up. And then there was Thamar. Uh, that, that was a messed up story. Go down to verse 5. And Salmon begot Boaz, who was a Moabite. Who, who, was, who was Boaz of? Of Rahab. That Rahab is Rahab. And Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, who was a straight up full blooded Moabite. And, and Ruth and Obed begot Jesse. You see this messed up bloodline? And, and, and Jesse begot David. And I got other names. I can't go into it now. Other names underlined. If you study out each one of these people in this lineage, you will see murderers, rapists, drunkards. There's all kind of stuff in Jesus' bloodline. And it wasn't even pure Jew. That's why they hung the sign over his cross that said, he says he's... No, they wrote a, a pilot wrote King of the Jews. And they said, no, no, no. You write up there. He says he's King of the Jews. Because they knew he wasn't even... Full blooded. But he had pure, he, he wasn't full blooded, but he had pure blood, didn't he? Y'all hear what I'm saying? He wasn't full blooded, but he had pure blood. First Corinthians chapter one and verse seven twenty seven says this but God have chosen the foolish things of the world. To, to, con, to confound the wise. The Greek there is to cause the wise to blush from embarrassment. God has chosen the foolish things to cause the wise to blush from embarrassment. And God has chosen the weak things to confound the things that are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. Things which are not to bring the naught. Things are. Jesus said over in John chapter 15, he said, 
You have not chosen me. I've chosen you. He looked at you in your sin and said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. That you should go forth and bring forth fruit that, that would remain. I don't know how you feel about it, but it, it, it thrills me when I look through the Bible and I see how God used people who were so unqualified and did it like Paul said in, in, in Corinthians. He did it on purpose to confound those that thought they was wise. The natural man would have went in and, and, and Jesse's firstborn son who was tall and dark and handsome and looked like he had it all together would have appointed, put him as, as the king of Israel because they just had Saul who was tall, dark, and handsome. He was the worst thing they could have had. And God said, no. Y'all got this little bastard son that, by the way, you put him, out on the, put him out in the field. He's 13 years old. You got him out in the field where, you, where he has to fight with lions and, and bears to stay alive. Nobody's going to put a 13-year-old son out away from the house by himself with sheep where he's got to contend with a bear and a lion unless you got a death wish on him. I'm telling you, David didn't have no respect. He did not have any respect. He probably was a redheaded, he, you heard that old saying, treat me like I'm a redheaded stepchild. There he was, that was David. The rabbis say this, they were so, the rab, they were so racist. They were so racist. The rabbi, the rabbinical books teaching the founding fathers say this, that everybody in David's community despised him so much they knew he was born out of well that he was who, who he was that when anything in their little village Bethlehem was an extremely small village that when anything in their little village got stolen or broken they automatically blamed David because he was the minority did y'all hear what I just said if something went wrong it was that minority guy that did it pure racism against David. And that's what he lived under. Can you imagine those big brothers? I mean, remember he went took that cheese down to them? Who, who, what you trying, you know, they, was, they made fun of him, they ridiculed him. That oldest brother whom God would refuse said, who'd you leave him little sheep with? Basically, you're a little nothing. What you doing down here? Oh, you better be careful how you talk to people that you don't think count. <laughs> God might raise them up and put them over you before it's over. Will you listen to what I'm saying? When somebody's on their when somebody's on their way up, you better treat them nice because you might pass them on your way down. Uh huh. Everybody, yeah, you better treat them with respect. But can you imagine the looks on their faces? as Samuel was pouring that anointing oil over David's head, can you imagine the look on Jesse's wife's face? Because I can promise you, he had probably been treated a little different in that house. We can see from where he was at, tending to sh None of the other boys that don't say were shepherds. They didn't have to call them into the house. Only David's the one that had to call into the house. Uh, but God, he's a good God. He loves to take messed up people. He loves to put his hands on what everybody thinks is a nobody and raise them up and make them a somebody in front of anybody. God loves to do that. He'll bless them in front of everybody when everybody thought there was a nobody. Amen. Amen? It just thrills me to think that David, who, who everybody in that village knew and disdained and thought this punk won't ever be nothing, this little half-breed, what's he doing? And he sits on the throne. The greatest king in history the one that was least likely 
became the greatest king in history. And you know why? It wasn't because he, he didn't become the greatest king in history because he qualified. He didn't become the greatest king in history because of uh, his wisdom or anything. It was his son Solomon that had the wisdom. David was a warrior. He was a fighter. David became the greatest king in history because your Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. And in the Hebrew, in the, uh, the Greek rather, that says he was a man that was concerned with finding the heart of God. If we would just get concerned with finding the heart of God for our lives, we could do great things, couldn't we? A man after God's own heart. Look at David when, when he committed, I won't say adultery, well, it was adultery, but he, 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 he com his rape really with Bathsheba and had her husband killed and covered it up. Samuel's dead and Nathan the prophet now comes in. This man had all these sheep and his neighbor had one and this man had a visitor. Instead of killing any of his bunch of sheep, he went over and killed the guy's one sheep and fed him to this visitor and David was enraged. Who is that man? Tell me who that man is. He's going to have that man. And uh, Nathan said, Thou art the man. Bam! Be sure your sin will find you out. He had it covered up, then married Bathsheba, then had uh, Uriah, Uzziah, her husband, killed. It was all hush-hush. Until the prophet showed up and said, You are the man. But he, watch David's greatness. You know what he did? He didn't deny it. He didn't try to run over it. He repented right then. Bam. And you find David in the book of Psalms saying, Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Don't take your spirit from me. He was in sin, and he was saying, please, God, don't take your Holy Ghost from me. That's what made a red-headed, half-breed bastard son become the greatest king in the history of the world. God, don't take your spirit from me. I got to, I got to stay right with God. N not God make me perfect, because nobody's ever perfect. If you're in, in here and you're perfect, write a book and sell it. We'll all buy it. You'll be a millionaire in a month's time if you can tell everybody how to be perfect, because everybody knows they're not perfect. But the grace of God, aren't you so glad that where the law had us captive of Jesus Christ, it said we've all received of his grace and his mercy. When the law had us captive, God sent his only son through a bloodline that looked unlikely, an unlikely scenario in the natural, but pure blood in the spirit. And God sent him to redeem us and do away with the law and send grace that you and I who were unqualified, I mean, hey, we're Gentiles. None of us qualified to be saved. None of us qualified to the covenants of Abraham, but the blessing of Abraham's come on us, and we're called the seed of Abraham now. Hallelujah. Am I telling you to go get messed up? No, I'm not telling you to mess up. And that's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you to walk straight, talk straight, and live the best you can. But I'm telling you, I have found this out, that shame will keep the blessing of God off your life. And as long as you feel inadequate and shamed over your life, you'll be like, you'll be like uh, um, Moses when God said, Go in and tell Abraham, go in and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses said, who am I, God? I stutter. I, oh, I'm not anybody to do this, God. I committed murder. I did all this. I did all that. God said, go, I'll be with you. 
and finally had to raise up his brother Aaron to go talk for him because Moses was so insecure with his stutter. I'm, he said, I'm slow of speech, whatever that means. People think it meant he stuttered. I'm slow of speech. Well, why would God pick somebody that had a speech impediment to go in and talk to the king of the world? Because God don't need your ability. He needs your availability. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If you're trying to serve God with your ability, you will surely fail. But if you say, God, put your ability on mine. Put your spirit on me. Use me through your spirit. Give me the mind of Christ. You'll succeed every time. Amen, everybody. I'm letting you out early because I'm through. It's It's 10 minutes before time, but... We covered some ground in that. We did. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I take great comfort in that. I, I take great comfort in that family was messed up, and that's the family God sent the prophet the anointed king out of. Great comfort. I'm, I'm, I, there's something I want to tell you. I'm... I'm I, I've been at that hospital all day and I'm forgetting things, but there's something I want to tell you about Jack David's sisters. Help me think, Jesus. What's the point I want to tell everybody about David's sisters? Anyhow, any whom, thank God. Thank God that he blesses our mess. Amen. How many of you feel that of your own accord, of your bloodline, of your life's history, you pretty well deserve the goodness of God. How many of you feel like it's a miracle that God even listens to you when you pray? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Just be careful how you treat people. The very one you think is a nothing and won't make it and won't, won't ever achieve anything. That's the one God's going to put his hand on you. So, yeah, that's the one. Don't you love him? Don't you love him? If you enjoyed this message, please share. This message is on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. So feel free to share it with all your friends and loved ones. You can also check out other great messages just like this one by visiting setfree.cc, the Church Center app, or our YouTube channel, username setfreesc. Thank you again for watching. We pray you have a blessed day.